Your Highness, do you still claim the throne in Iran? Well, first and foremost, uh, I want to see sovereignty return to the hands of the Iranian people, who ever since this revolution have lost their opportunity to decide for themselves under a system that does not respect their right to vote freely. And as such, there's no way one can measure what the will of the people is. And therefore, my first objective is to bring uh, a scenario of uh, a secular democratic system under which the sovereignty of the people would be guaranteed. And it is up to the Iranian people to decide what they would like to have as a system in the future. I'm primarily dedicated to the cause of democracy and human rights in my country. Am I right to assume that you are no longer claiming the throne of Iran? It's not a matter of demanding or not demanding. Historically, everybody knows that I have, I'm the heir to the throne, having been uh, the first uh, born of uh, my father, who was king before. And, uh, but that doesn't mean that at this point the issue for me is to debate the form of regime. Uh, my uh, idea is to focus on the content of the future regime, uh, that has to be democratic in a parliamentary system with a clear separation of religion from government. Uh, whether the final form will be in the shape of a parliamentary monarchy or a republic, as I said, will be something that will be subject to debate within a constitution assembly that will decide ultimately beyond the content, the final form of the regime. That I leave to my compatriots. But, but I'm ready to serve them in that capacity if they so desire. But in which capacity you call for the prosecution of the supreme leader of Iranian revolution, Ali Khamenei, at the International Criminal Court for crimes and suppression of Iranian people? Well, I believe that uh, Ali Khamenei is the ultimate and sole person responsible for everything that has been happening in our country, as he alone controls just about every aspect of governance and control in our uh, homeland. As such, uh, all the crimes that have been perpetrated against my compatriots in terms of violation of their most basic human rights is ultimately his responsibility. And as such, I believe that there is grounds uh, to put the case in front of the International Criminal Court on the basis uh, that it has had precedence. Uh, for instance, in the case of the former president of the Ivory Coast. Uh, since Iran has not ratified the Rome Statutes, we cannot directly go to the ICC, and we have to refer the case to the Security Council of the United Nations, who could then pass on this uh, dossier to the ICC for, for pursuance. Uh, the issue is extremely important for my compatriots, and as a matter of fact, as a result of my initiative, I have had tremendous amount of feedback from the country, from many Iranians, including many members of this very regime in various apparatuses of governance. Uh, from coercive forces such as uh, revolutionary guards uh, as well as the uh, civilian bureaucracy. You say that the case needs to be referred to the UN Security Council, but as an individual you can't do that. Is there any country which is prepared to adopt your case? No, I know that I cannot do it as an individual. No Iranian as an individual can, but we can refer the case based on uh, a volume of uh, uh, facts of documents that attest to the fact that there has been systematic violation of human rights in Iran for many, many years uh, on a variety of subjects. And as such, there is grounds uh, to bring this uh, to the attention of uh, the Security Council, who could, of course, uh, pass on, as I explained earlier, uh, this uh, situation to the International Criminal Court. Uh, uh, if there is indeed uh, um, appropriate uh, documentation for it. I have spoken, of course, to many experts in the field, including legal advisors to many foreign governments who believe that there is more than enough evidence that has been submitted in the package that was attached to my uh, letter uh, that passed on this dossier to the uh, Security Council uh, to have merits and grounds for uh, the, uh, the, this uh, doc, uh, dossier to be uh, uh, given to the International Criminal Court. To which countries those experts and advisors belong? Well, some countries that have actual membership in the Security Council, including a couple of the permanent members of the Security Council. Well, the reaction, I've received some uh, uh, letters in response of uh, acquiescing the receipt of uh, this uh, dossier uh, as to how to follow up on the case. Uh, it resides uh, now within the hands of uh, the Security Council. 
uh, to whose members uh, this uh, letter ac uh, um, accompanied by the documentation was sent to all the representatives of uh, these uh, countries, uh, their ambassadors at the United Nations, as well as the heads of governments of all members of the Security Council uh, at this time. Wait, as of the last, uh, if you will, membership that changed, uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, as of last January. By signaling out Khamenei, it appears as if you are absolving other members of the current regime, such as Ahmadinejad, of responsibility. Is that right? Well, as I said, uh, uh, when you are uh, aiming at a system and at the very top of this pyramid uh, lands somebody who is practically omnipotent, it, he may have his uh, tools to operate, including many members of, uh, of his uh, system. But at the end, uh, I hold him ultimately accountable for everything under him. That does not exonerate others uh, that are in cahoots with him, but ultimately he's the, the, the ultimate man in charge. Uh, and uh, as such, I think that it is important to bring focus on the issue of uh, uh, violation of human rights and crimes against humanity, which is a much more central issue to Iranians, along with the rights to have uh, democracy and freedom, far more important than, shall we say, uh, the nuclear dossier of the current regime, which may be more of an issue now, internationally speaking, but to us Iranians, uh, our freedom and our human rights uh, are important. And by the world acknowledging that the issue of human rights in Iran is not any less important than any other subject, they will, sending, they will be sending a clear message of solidarity with the legitimate right of my compatriots to demand justice and equality and under the uh, Universal Declaration of Human Rights, as well as indicating that if Sorry. there is one way of bringing more pressure on the regime, this certainly can help as well. And finally, I would like to add that yes, it is important for many people who have been somehow stuck within this regime, and yes, they might have carried many orders by this regime, but if one day we want to resolve the issue and bring an end to this cycle of violence, right. uh, not only by creating a democratic alternative, but going, going through a process of national reconciliation right. and amnesty, we cannot forever hold everybody accountable. Have and that may be a way to help the loosening of the system and the defections from this regime to people who need to have a guarantee of survival beyond this regime, even though at this point they are stuck in this regime. Your comments on the actions and practices of the current Iranian regime leads one to say, didn't your father's regime commit similar acts like the oppression of the opposition at the hands of the Savak? Well, I have been myself critical of those aspects that were not justifiable and cannot be condoned uh, under the previous regime. However, I would uh, suggest that uh, there is no comparison between what existed before as to what is going on today. At the time, let me be very clear, the only objection that the opponent of the previous regime had was on the issue of lack of political freedom and participation, whereas every other opportunities and freedoms did exist for Iranians. But today, the most basic rights, not just political, but even the more basic uh, social rights have been, has been violated. Right. The status of women, religious minorities, ethnic communities, uh, I can go on and on. Right. Uh, it's, there's no basis for comparison. However, that doesn't mean that uh, criticism should not be due when it is, and I have been very vocal about that on the record, and I believe that the future that I am seeking uh, for the sake of future generation is one where we learn from history, correct the mistakes, right. avoid any kind of consultation of authority or uh, abuse of it and under a right. system of justice uh, and law. Right. You say that people of Iran are facing a regime which commits atrocities. This requires the intervention of the free world. Not at all. I think Iraq was a big mistake if you ask me. But the point is, I have seldom seen movements of civil disobedience that avoid violence to bring down authoritarian regime without some degree of international support. We have seen that in many cases in Eastern Europe at the time of the collapse of the Soviet Union. I think today the Iranian people have very clearly indicated their overwhelming rejection of this system. However, they are defenseless and they are not trying to fight this fight through means of violence but through civil disobedience. Right. Now, if the world wants to see real change, 
they cannot only depend on external means of pressure, such as, for instance, economic sanctions. At some point, if diplomacy has failed to produce results, and we have to avoid war as right. much as possible, there's only one solution left, and that is to bring pressure from within against this regime, and that means helping the Iranian people against this regime. Well, that doesn't mean well, foreign intervention, that doesn't mean invasion, that simply means support. Well, it appears as if you are calling for an intervention similar to that in Iraq, right? Well, look, look at what the people in Iran were saying two years ago. At, at, at the outset of the uh, fiasco of uh, uh, this election scandal that occurred, giving rise to the Green Movement, what were the people on the street asking? What did they verbally say in their slogans asking the world to support? They were calling upon the American uh, president, Mr. Obama, are you with us or with them? Uh, that is a request for intervention, for support, for acquiescence. Uh, I think the message was loud and uh, clear on the streets of Iran. I'm just merely repeating طيب. what the expectation of my compatriot طيب. is. But the star, but the star, but the star, the star, the star, the star, the the strong, uh, greatest democracy uh, out there. While talking about foreign intervention, you say that Obama is not in a mood for such an intervention, correct? What I'm saying was that an opportunity was wasted two years ago where the policy of this government, uh, the U.S. government, was to focus primarily on engaging and trying to have a negotiation with, with this regime that time and again has been using this as a means to buy time only to proceed with its own uh, ultimate intentions. Meanwhile, the world as a lack, uh, lack of transparency is stuck between uh, failed diplomacy and the prospect of uh, potential military strikes uh, against my country. And in between all this, I'm the one, uh, along with many of my compatriots, suggesting that the solution is not war, the solution is not to attack Iran, the solution is to help the Iranian people to but bring about change, and as such, under a different system, the whole world can breathe easier, including our neighbors in the Persian Gulf area, but and everybody else, because this regime has proven to be antagonistic uh, to stability, to peace, uh, and is uh, committed to spread radicalism and terrorism, as opposed to bring stability and uh, peaceful coexistence. In an interview with Channel 10 of Israeli TV, you called on Israel to abstain from attacking Iran and to help Iranian people instead of that to topple the current regime. Did you say that? Yes, uh, I would do anything in my power to prevent uh, a military conflict uh, with my country. Uh, I'm most concerned about the consequences uh, to my compatriots. Uh, it will certainly uh, not be effective in terms of uh, putting an end to the Iranian nuclear program, it may at best delay it a little bit. And at the end of the day, the, uh, the whole world might come to the conclusion that uh, this regime has to disappear completely. Right. Uh, the only difference would be that in the meantime you have had a war, you open a wound that has never existed uh, between my country and, 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 and Israel and the Jewish people since the time of Cyrus the Great, and uh, it will uh, force uh, elements that could be on our side to a position of defense. War is not the best solution, it certainly is not my solution, but there has to be an alternative. And the alternative, again I repeat, is to help the Iranian people overcome this regime at their own hands. It's, right. it's the least costly and most legitimate way to bring about a real uh, final solution. Do you think that the Iranian people would react positively to your call to Israel to help topple the regime? But I ask you, if you're an Iranian sitting in Iran, would you rather have a country that could help you, help you get rid of this regime, which is the root cause for the problem, or on top of uh, injury, adding insult by bombing you? I think the answer is clear. Right. Now, understand one thing. Iranians are proud of their history and culture. When Cyrus the Great, who is the first uh, leader of our world uh, to bring about human rights in his declaration when he freed uh, the Jewish slave by conquering Babylon, and help them rebuild their temples. Right. We today, as the children of Cyrus the Great and Queen Esther, right. now are in our hour of need. And we ask simply these really people that, you know, perhaps your existence is owed uh, a great deal uh, to Persians back then. Is your answer to us today bombing us or helping us? Right. I think that's a very obvious question that people inside Iran would be asking themselves and their expectations. Right. Besides, if you follow to the extent that today the Internet provides us with so many other means of measurements. Uh, you can imagine that there is a strong undercurrent, on the one hand, between the Israeli people 
and their counterparts in the Iranian uh, side, the Iranian people, uh, sending each other messages of, of peace and, 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 and brotherhood as Five. opposed to... Uh, the rhetoric of warmongering and, uh, طيب. and, and military conflict. Mas'ud Rajawi, Mas'ud Rajawi of Mujahidi Khalq was considered a good man when he challenged the regime, but turned into an evil when he gained the support of Saddam. Is it fine to seek Israel's support, but not the support of Saddam or the Arabs? I don't see the point of your question. First of all, at the time that I was in Egypt, when Saddam attacked Iran, I sent a telegram to the chief of staff of the Iranian Air Force from Cairo asking him to allow me to return to my country, even though Khomeini was there and the revolutionary regime had taken over, to fight against the uh, aggressor as a pilot in the Iranian Air Force. Uh, my choice was not to seek the support of a country that had attacked me. Uh, well, uh, the other groups may have uh, decided otherwise, right. um, and I leave that to the Iranian people to decide, right. you know, who uh, is a patriot and, and who acts against them. Right. Uh, Amir, the Amir. Of, uh, Amir. 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 Uh, that's for history to decide. Right. But so, uh, so in terms of support for the cause, as I said, I am not asking for any kind of military intervention on the country. I said, we want a campaign, internal campaign of civil disobedience. That requires a lot of support, not just from one country, Israel happens to be one of them, right. but any people who believe in, in, in equality and justice and freedom uh, right. all around the world. But uh, I would here. particularly expect uh, countries in our own neighborhood to do that because, after all, uh, right. they stand to suffer from the consequences of this regime's perpetration of, uh, of, of instability as opposed to a different Iran. Your offer to fight in the Iranian-Iraqi war alongside the current regime led some people to consider that a sign of racist, nationalistic, Persian attitude. What do you say to that? Well, of course, what do you expect me to do? If my country is attacked, my duty is to defend my country if it's been invaded by a foreign military force. Of course, it's my primary duty as a citizen of Afghanistan. Do you agree that there is a common feeling in Iran that they might have got Islam from the Arabs, but they don't really like them? Is this a fair assessment? Look, the viewpoint that I have is one where we think of ourselves in the region not to be always manipulated by greater forces that have pinned us against one another throughout history to live together in peace. Persians with Arabs, Sunnis with Shias. It does not do any good to any of us if we allow these kind of conflicts take away from what we really ought to be focusing on, which is regional cooperation, regional uh, uh, investments, uh, a common market, a, a, a common regional security pact that we can collectively achieve. I'm confident that a democratic Iran will work to put an ultimate end and solution to the Palestinian-Israeli conflict. Uh, to follow up on what uh, at the time Crown Prince Abdullah had proposed as a, a road to peace. I believe that this plan can be implemented as long as you don't have a regime in Iran trying to do that. And once that is Taib. resolved, we can all live in peace in the region and, and, and based on mutual Taib. respect and cooperation. Let me go back to the topic of opposition. You called for the unification of opposition internally and externally. What did you do to achieve that objective? So we are working on it right now to create a national uh, council that will uh, aim at uh, asking for the right to conduct free elections in Iran. And ultimately, uh, and we cannot expect this to happen under the current regime, which explains why we need to get rid of this regime before we can have uh, an atmosphere in which we can conduct free elections. Right. That being said, a constituent assembly would be then be able to decide uh, and debate uh, the future of Iran. In this, the secular democratic forces, I believe, are in this, on the same page and in agreement. Your grandfather said, in reference to Iran, one country, one culture, and one language. What about other ethnic minorities? Did you forget them? But if you listen carefully to what I've been saying, I see I've been a proponent of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, which I hope would be the basis uh, of uh, our future uh, constitution. When one says that the right of any citizen of that country, irrespective of uh, religious affiliation or ethnic background, will have to be preserved, 
the guarantee will be in a system that in my view has to be also to some degree decentralized where you have a central government in charge of the five major areas which is health, education, foreign policy, defense and uh, the overall economic strategy but we leave a great uh, degree of uh, self-governance in, in various uh, uh, states of the country uh, under a uh, uh, system which will uh, allow much more participation of course much more democracy. So, it is normal for a country to have an official language, so but Amir. ethnic ethnicities should have the right, of course, uh, to uh, so maintain their own culture as well as their languages. I don't see any problem with that. Are you for a federation in Iran? I believe in a decentralized system, not necessarily a federal system. You talked about Iran's relations with its neighbors and said if there was a really national government in Iran, it would deal in a different way with its neighbors. If you were in power, how would you deal with the question of the disputed islands in the Gulf? We had an understanding, a memorandum of understanding with uh, 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 our uh, counterpart at the time. Uh, I believe that all of these issues can be resolved uh, under a different system uh, which respects uh, whatever it is that we had agreed on as opposed to being violation of it under the current regime. And uh, all I can tell you is that I would refer um, uh, what we have uh, to that uh, established agreement uh, where I don't believe there was any dispute on it. And uh, anyway, a responsible uh, democratic regime uh, in the future will be able to deal in a very different way with our neighbors uh, on the basis of mutual respect and, and cooperation as opposed to what you have now, which is so, very Amir. much antagonistic with, with some aims of its own, uh, which I'm sure is no secret uh, to those of us uh, listening but, to me right now but, uh, in the region. But the Samuel Amir, of this Samuel regime is Samuel very Amir, different Amir, that Mar it will be that of a true national uh, government in Iraq. You talked about good relations in connection with the issue of islands. Would you go as far as accepting arbitration? I don't think there's an issue that uh, is in dispute based on the memorandum of understanding that we have had. If there's been a violation of what was understood in that memorandum by the current regime, of course, uh, there will be something that uh, we will not tolerate uh, by abiding to our side of the bargain. Uh, as such, uh, I think that, uh, you know, that we will be uh, abiding by our own uh, signature, uh, unlike this regime. However, it is not my decision to tell you tomorrow what will be the policy of the future government. That is a question that ultimately you'll have to ask uh, the people who will be at the time in charge uh, of our government. But I can tell you as a matter of principle that I believe it goes without saying that a truly responsible government in Iran will be uh, first and foremost uh, one that will observe uh, not only international law but also will be uh, 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 committed to what they have put their signature to, طيب. unlike this regime. It was reported that you and your family left Iran with a large fortune. What do you say to that? No, it's absolutely false. You have to understand that those who accused uh, uh, my family, particularly my father of it, had an intention. They wanted to uh, uh, provide some character assassination in order to gain power, and we know them as they are now. Now, a simple question is, in 33 years, there has not been a single shred of evidence proposed by this regime who had lost every case that is brought against my family uh, uh, about these alleged uh, statements in the uh, past 30 years, nor has there been a single Iranian who has ever brought any claim of impropriety against the family. Only the regime and its rhetoric has been accusing uh, my family of that, and I think the record will be clear well, once the people will have access to all the facts, unlike all the distorted lies that has been said so about so us. Amir, so Amir, Finally, the Iranian government brought a suit case against you in Switzerland. Is that correct? Yes, and they lost every case because they had no evidence whatsoever to back up their claims.